awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and sitting 500 miles to my left in Washington, D.C.'s safety city, Baltimore, Maryland, is my good friend, Andrew Torres. Andrew, welcome back. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. Um, I can say that I am genuinely not prepared to murder you and Eli this time. <laughs> <laughs> You loved it. It was you such a good movie. You loved every Glad second of it. to hear it. Great film. <laughs> and sitting 600 miles to my left in New York's danger suburb in New Jersey <laughs> is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going, buddy? I'm amazing, Heath. I need to seek out more of this artistic content. I need Picasso <laughs> painting while he had diarrhea. I need <laughs> Beethoven's symphony that like he got a really bad flu during and just sort of like banged out the end halfway. I need more of this art. Yeah. I need it. Or just Sly Stallone writes a symphony. Speaking anything, of which. Yeah. Anything tell Sly us, Stallone Andrew, <laughs> what are we going to be breaking down today? We watched Rocky Five: The Search for More Money. No, that literally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this was a uh, misguided penance from uh, last time where you destroyed literally everything I hold dear in the universe or what. But but Heath, I, I, I told you we were supposed to watch Rocky four. <laughs> yeah, we were. We really, really were. Yep. And I did, actually. <laughs> um, and Eli, we also watched Rocky five. How bad was that movie? Well, if you loved Rocky. You will hate this movie. <laughs> but if you love to hate movies, you'll fucking love it. If Sly could write as well as he speaks, he would write Rocky Five. <laughs> <laughs> and he can. And he did. So I think it's vital when anyone discusses the masterpiece that is Rocky Five, <laughs> people know the backstory. So the backstory was. Sylvester Stallone had signed a like six movie contract and he did like Cobra and kick pushers and punch fighter or whatever it was. <laughs> and he was just like short a movie. And they were like, how about Rocky five? And he was like, but the whole movie's over. There's nothing to do any movies about it anymore. And they were like, come on, you owe us a movie. We gave you the money. You have to do a movie. So he wrote Rocky five. And the first draft he wrote, at least according to the trivia on IMDb is the darkest, like, grim dark telling of the rocky story he loses like his first bat and then he just gets sicker and sicker and the movie ended with him dying so he went on vacation a scriptwriter <laughs> did amazing. all yeah a scriptwriter did all the cocaine in philadelphia and this was the script that was waiting for him <laughs> 2 days before shooting Wow. Wait, so Stallone, like, sort of didn't write all of this? Sort of didn't. Apparently, he wrote parts of it, but he wrote huge chunks of this were not written by him, and he only found out about them two days before he was supposed to film them. Yeah. See, that's what happens when you don't let the genius writer that is Sly Stallone do the whole script. <laughs> it, I, I want to know that script writer whose epitaph will read, his scripts were kind of a step down writings wise from Sly Stallone. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> this is, so what you're saying is we could have had Cobra 2 instead of yeah. this movie. You yeah. could have had Cobra oh. 2. I say that so often. <laughs> okay, next week. All right. And uh, anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I, well, I don't want to pick low hanging fruit here and go with uh, best worst plot hole. We'll get That's to that. One. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> but how about the one that that appeals to the lawyer in me? I I always stop the film whenever whenever uh, we have the the little spinning newspaper headlines. This has the best <laughs> worst fake newspapers. They're, They're amazing. amazing. <laughs> they are worth the oh. price of admission. I didn't stop it for the fake newspapers. Oh, you, you missed out. You missed out. There's a suicide note by Sly in there. It's pretty phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I do that. Okay. We'll get there. All right. Well, I'm going to go with best worst. This 100% counts as a Christian movie. No illusions. She's going to yell at us when you come back from your it's, vacation. This counts. There's so many moments confirm this. We'll point them out as we go. But I want to do one other one. Best worst. 
wildly depressing cast. So uh, I thought Rocky's kid in Over the Top was a bad actor. <laughs> <laughs> that was nothing. This is his real son yes. that we get in this movie mm -hmm. playing Rocky's son. <laughs> That's Sage Moonblood Stallone, <laughs> real name. Yep. And he is Alma from the Book of Mormon. It's <laughs> just 90 minutes of like, Absolutely. Oh, I hate yep. you. And that kid in real life actually died of probably a drug overdose in 2012. Really dark. Great and comedy other, tag. That's a great comedy just tag. Amazing. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to... I got three riffs the on AIDS. that. What are you talking about? This movie was terrible. The AIDS crisis ravaged the 1980s. All right. Well, I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, oh. The other main character, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, the other main character other than Sly Stallone is Tommy Gunn, Rocky's protege. And he's played by a real life boxer named Tommy Morrison, who had AIDS and died in 2013. Oh I was kidding. So did you, you were joking? You Why? weren't joking. Why did That's, you build this nope. into your comedy? Why did you uh, foreshadow it by accident? I feel like yours is weirder. <laughs> so, yeah, that's real. Tommy Morrison was heavyweight champ of, I think, the WBO in 1993. Yep. But then got diagnosed with HIV in 96. A and then he spent the rest of his life saying it was a false positive and, and claim. Well, that was the first excuse he made. He wanted to keep boxing. So he said false positive. And then he claimed that he actually got cured of HIV, which is not a thing, nope. sadly, but he said they should let him fight, but nobody would give him a boxing license, obviously. At one point, the boxing commission in Quebec was like, yeah, all right, uh, I guess we'll, we'll talk about this. You, you just pass a public HIV test and you're good. And Morrison was like, no. But <laughs> <laughs> somehow... He actually did manage to get a couple more fights in his career. No idea how that worked. But, you know, he was way past his prime at that point and also tragically dying. So he never made any more real money. So, wow, let's this do comedy. Is um, Andrew, I believe. And then he died. Welcome to our comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> I must be looking at an old version of the notes. Oh, you know what? In the new version, it does say, I will talk about an AIDS victim and his horrible struggle of <laughs> denial and painful death. Yeah, okay, there we go. See, I had best cool. words sequel. Perfect. Yeah, so segue. <laughs> what's your next joke, Eli? I had, I'm going to go with best worst sequel. Now, look, <laughs> that's saying a lot. Return of Jafar is out there. <laughs> Emperor's New Group 3 is out there. Frozen 2 is on its way, but I give Rocky 5 best worst sequel. I'll say it. Wow. Yeah, I I did I did the math. Rocky 5 equals Die Hard 2 plus RoboCop 3. It does. That's true. So <laughs> math. That's the math. That's just the math. I actually love this movie. I don't know. I just, I just I don't care. Cuz it was like it was Rocky would be on channel 11 on repeats it, like Monday through Friday, Rocky one through five. And I was happy on Friday still. It didn't matter. Like Thursday was the best, obviously, but I was still happy. On Friday. It's amazing in its mediocrity. There's moments of the genius that was Rocky in it to make you long for the olden days. And yeah, then yeah, usually, usually shot for shot repetition. Well, including the exact <laughs> movies. Yeah. They were just like, there you go. Yeah. It also ends in a Ted Cruz ejaculation like manner, right? It's just like, <laughs> and then the movie was over. It's fucking incredible. I can't wait to talk about it. I can't wait for Rocky eight with Ted Cruz. That'll be fun. too. <laughs> Why do you torture me? <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but uh, I certainly didn't hear no bell. So we'll be back for, However many rounds it takes to capture the genius of Rocky Five. Hey, everybody. It's me, Kurt Cobain. And me, Jimi Hendrix. You know, we've had a lot of fun today. But it's important to remember that if you're a great artist, you have got to die young. That's right, Kurt. Dying young means never making a fifth part in anything. Literally ever in any music, never a fifth part that you have to make. It means never doing a Super Bowl halftime show sponsored by Pringles. But mostly, 
It means dying at exactly the right time so that your legacy stays intact. And I'm Ted Danson. Hey, check me out this month on the celebrity roast of Alec Baldwin. Okay. I mean, technically, I was murdered by Courtney Love, but <clears throat> uh, he, he's, he's joking. Am I, though? Legally speaking, yes. But reality speaking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And we're going to start off with clips from the amazing movie that very much ended right before this movie started. <laughs> just like to tease us. This is the first scene of Rocky Five, and it's just like, See? Huh? Remember Rocky Four? How great was that? <laughs> you asked for this. This is your fault. Here I you mean, go. you know what doesn't hold up? Rocky Four. Uh, I'll say uh, it right uh, What? Uh, okay, and, and now I am prepared <laughs> How to dare murder you? Eli. Yeah, no. Rocky Four is cinematic perfection, and I will hear nothing to the contrary. Okay. The, the literal montage we see is no pain, no pain, punch, punch. Okay, a little bit of pain. <laughs> and he doesn't, he, he can take all those punches and then just it's his turn to punch and then he wins. <laughs> okay. Oh, man, you know, I'm, I'm starting to realize why I sucked so much at punch out, right? Like I watched a <laughs> lot of Rocky Four and the whole like, no, 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 just keep punching. Don't worry about defense. That strategy didn't work when you hit bald bull. <laughs> Works in fucking Rocky Four. That's how you beat a Russian. Yeah. So I actually Googled this. It's in the IMDb trivia of Sylvester Stallone, except it has like a tag of like in question. According to Sylvester Stallone in an interview, he thought of it as his remake of the Thriller and Manila fight, which I love because <laughs> it means that Sylvester <laughs> Stallone thinks Muhammad Ali's strategy was get punched a bunch. Sorry. Well, kind you of. You said that like the whitest person ever. You called it the thriller the in thr Manila. The thriller. <laughs> I, but I can't you say You can say thriller. Thrilla. Yeah. I absolutely cannot. <laughs> I cannot. Hi, Gam listeners. I'm going to now give you two readings. And I'd like you to, we're going to have us, we're start a Twitter poll. Just, uh, Tim, you please. dropped a start hard <laughs> ER, hard <laughs> ER just now. Would you prefer that I call it the thriller in Manila Gross. or the thrilla in Manila? Mm, not Big, for me. Bigot for the question mark That's was a hate. Bigot, crime. bigot for the up. <laughs> That's you. You have two. Andrew, are you keeping bigot score for this episode? Well, yeah, that's I, your I, one, I guess. I wanted secret answer C, the punchy thing in the Philippines. But <laughs> <laughs> why, do, why does all the boxing stuff have to rhyme like that? They always do like, why couldn't it be like, they're going to have to force it. They're, it's going to be like the. Punchin and Munchin, Munich. It's, you know what I meant. <laughs> yes. Yeah. German speak English. The other problem it. is like a lot of boxing happens in Madison Square Garden, and that is not an easy <laughs> rhyme, right? The Harden in the Garden. Smartin. Nope. Farting? That's not even a word. No. Smartin? Don't you. Who said farting? Take this serious, guys. <laughs> $24 million bout. All right. So we watch a little bit of Rocky IV, which whether or not you were born before or after 1985 is either a great movie or a terrible movie. It's a great or, movie or, or the greatest movie. Moving on. Yeah. <laughs> and we cut to what you were all were hoping for when you watched Rocky IV. Hey, did all that getting punched in the head give him any brain damage? <laughs> well, we get that. You mean that shower scene? Yeah, him shaking in the shower. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, so this is clearly Stallone being like, I you remember the shower scene from Cry Kid 2? I want that. Uh, you know, you know my shower leans that I do? <laughs> I want a long shot of that. And it's just him leaning in the shower and, and then having a breakdown, which was terrifying because he's just like, I need shower help. I get Adrian, <laughs> please uh, help. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely from the original script, but I'm sorry to interrupt here. Andrew, you have a fascinating note here, and I need to know more of it. Do you want to tell us what you mean by little known fact Stallone's lawyer has a mandatory ass clause? Uh, yeah. What? Yeah, every Stallone movie, you've got to have a lingering shot on Sylvester Stallone's ass. Oh, so I, I want that to be true so bad. Officially, there's a lawyer with a worse job than me, so. So <laughs> check that one off early. Yeah. There you go. Ass shot. So, yeah, we get the glorious can't stop shaking scene. We were all hoping oh. to end Rocky for it was it was just way too real. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is like this is clearly Stallone in real life. Just being like, I don't know what's happening. Tell you, Shire, <laughs> my, my career is like, like a weepy shower now. It's, 
My, and my, career, mouth, like my a... mouth angle keeps getting crazier. The age's <laughs> over. Uh. It's technically longitudinal now. Anyway, so they, <laughs> the plane arrives back from Russia, and he has a marching band waiting for him, but but he's just there to see his son. Yeah, saying the plane arrived back from Russia, that's a little generous of this scene. This is this is really like the Soviet Republic of Green Screenistan that uh, <laughs> the, like that's 400 fair. dots per mile uh, image of a plane kind of gently cruises across as if animated by an Apple II GS. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this is where we get introduced to the greatest character in the movie, which is the press corps. The press corps in Rocky V <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> are, without question, the protagonists of the movie. Yeah, they are very well organized. They handle them <laughs> so well and like mm -hmm. coordinated. They know their shit. Yeah, I, I have 11 different notes in, in, in throughout this, which are all basically like, can we give the press corps from Rocky Five just like hand put them in charge of CNN right now? Like everything oh, related to kidding? the Mueller report and be like, <laughs> yeah, let let these guys tackle it. We'd have changed the whole world. Absolutely. Would have been over in two months. Ted Cruz would be president right now. Woo! So, yeah, they ask him questions like, are Russian people human? And is there any truth <laughs> that getting punched in the head is not great for you? But then... Evil Don King shows up with his own <laughs> mic that is plugged into the sound system for some reason. How did he hack? Did he hack into? The, he has a wireless mic too. That like he set up his own PA. It's, I don't a, know. it's a Mr. Microphone. It's you know you know you gotta look into it. But. <laughs> and and this character is fifty percent uh, Jackie Childs from Seinfeld and fifty percent Don King. Ah, like. 1990 a little bit of that, johnny cochran too yeah yeah well yeah. i'm ja jackie Childs, yeah but yeah i love like this was literally like you could feel this being the trailing seconds of when it was okay to have an obviously racist caricature of don king in your movie mm, i don't it's know wonder well we should be fair we should explain that all of the rocky movies are for fearful white people what? right so like rocky one is because of muhammad ali and then they were like what are you was a tie so there was rocky 2 and then they were like what about the mr t looking one so there was rocky 3 and then they were like we're afraid of russia now and there's like rocky 4 and then they were like litigious ones oj got away with it so this is this brings us to rocky wait, 5. Wait, wait, wait. you think that was a tie that ending of rocky 1 <laughs> apollo apollo clearly got that yeah. punch in first are yeah. you serious yeah. <laughs> read a fucking book yeah that's a that's a Jesus loss Christ. rocky 1 is a loss that's a rocky loss one wins he wins he is a tie oh my god you did it, Adrian. You don't yeah. like Rocky Why would he Ford? say, you I did it? Uh, Why would nothing. he end the movie? Why would he end the movie if he was like, hey, Adrian, I did it? Because he went he the lost. distance. Yep. What does that mean? It, it means he was a street brawler that no one gets. Like, yes. Everybody thought he was going to be served up like those like eight guys that Mike Tyson knocked out in a combined 37 seconds. And uh, and he, he went all 12 rounds. Right. The loss is a win. It's yeah. deeper than you think. Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. I would like to apologize. This is Rocky one is obviously the perfect metaphor for the boomers. It's losing and then celebrating it because you didn't lose as badly as you thought you would. Hey, Noah's on vacation this week. There are no boomers on this <laughs> call. <continent. laughs> what generation are you? Uh, I'm millennial, just like you. Yeah, big exactly. Boy. No, <laughs> absolutely not. I'm a zennial, first of all, and I'm not. Mm -mm, that's just something millennials made up to try not to be millennials. <laughs> and it exists now. Yeah. <laughs> and can we talk about this press conference, right? Like th this movie, all right. yeah, yeah. the movie. I forgot. Yeah. Sorry, Andrew. It's, <laughs> it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be set two minutes after Rocky Four ends. Never minding the fact that it's you know five years later in real time. They're throwing this press conference in an airplane hangar that could easily fit i'm gonna say eighty seven thousand people and they've got like 12 guys <laughs> it's like hey rocky <laughs> you single-handedly won the cold war uh sorry we've got like me and my neighbor here to ask you and heckle you about not fighting <laughs> <laughs> you have brain damage question mark uh, that wasn't a, I have <laughs> that was a weird damage that's a weird <laughs> Question, but yeah, the Don Don King shows up and he's like, "Oh, Rocky, you're very clearly still covered in bruises. Tell us, are you gonna fight this guy who I brought with me, who will never have any other effect on the movie? <laughs> fight him now, right now. Say yes or no now, now. Three, two, one, now. Tell no. me." 
His name is Mac Guffin. He really needs to get in and punch. <laughs> <laughs> Little Mac Guffin. <laughs> I just want to point out that the first objection one of the reporters makes to challenging someone to a boxing match the moment they get back with obvious injuries is, come on, he's he's jet lagged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and Rocky won't take the fight right away. And then another reporter is like, all right, well, we, here's my heckling flow chart. Uh, Rocky, don't you have to answer all questions immediately? Isn't that a rule of questions? <laughs> and Rocky's like, you see what I did there? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, and the press corps just rabble, rabble. The moment he pauses, there's a rabble, rabble, rabble. <laughs> so then we cut to Rocky arriving home to his mansion in his limo. Yeah, put a pin in that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there's this weird moment when they get out of the limo where he's, like, dancing with Adrian and, like, making I'm going to fuck you super hard jokes. And, and the son is looking at them with the appropriate amount of horror for a teenage boy watching his parents in this scene. Yeah. And he actually asks Pauly, who is, again, this is Burt Young, who is also has severe brain damage, like in reality. And he's like, hey, Pauly, do you, do you know say anything strange about my dad? He just, he seems attracted to Talia Shire right now. <laughs> Any shower crying? Has he been doing any of that? Yeah, he has. See, my, my biggest disappointment with this scene is, uh, it, again, this is supposed to be a direct continuation of Rocky Four. When they left, there was like 11 minutes clearly showing how Rocky had a wacky robot in his mansion. And that robot <laughs> is gone from this movie. And we I never uh, get that. Yeah, it's true. I really the wanted wa you know, wacky robot. They couldn't get the wacky robot back. He wouldn't sign the contract. He had all sorts of riders and stuff. <laughs> I watched the VH1 behind the movies. It's really I don't want to go into it. I don't want to. I don't want to spread <laughs> spread gossip out of turn. Doing something with Hugh Jackman. It's a big project. I can't. While we're talking about Uncle Polly, can we talk about the shift of Polly from Rocky One to Rocky <sighs> Five? Okay. So here's the thing: the character of Polly in Rocky One is this sort of like abuser slash misunderstood like sort of pseudo villain who's keeping adrian and rocky apart he's really complex and somewhere between rocky three and rocky five but it definitely didn't totally start in rocky five sylvester stallone was like yeah uncle paulie he's like the fun super cool sidekick so the guy who like <laughs> punched Adrian and then told her she was a whore and kicked her out of the house in movie one is now like, uh-oh, Bully Dungun spilled all his candy nibbles. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird direction that the character's gone in in this film. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say misunderstood. I understand. It's just yeah. bad. Yeah. Bad, <laughs> bad writing. You don't think there's an oeuvre we're missing out on here? No. Okay. No. So now it's time for him to go into his son's room, which it turns out is half art studio. Now, spoiler alert, this will never matter, but it will also be one of the craziest scenes in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Rocky yeah. just walks in and he's like, wow, this drawing is amazing. It's like colors just come out of your fingers. <laughs> and the son's like, yeah, it's crayons. Are you okay? Are you <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, the real actor, are you okay? <laughs> My real dad? Are you okay? yeah, exactly. yeah. But before that young man can call cut, he reaches two pictures down, and the young man has drawn <laughs> hentai porn? Yeah. Right, he's drawn yeah. hentai porn. Yeah, can we yep. talk about it? It is definitely his French teacher if his French teacher were Jessica Rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And, and still, naked. Yeah. Topless. Topless. Exactly. And well, Stallone's I figured like, that oh, was implied by uh, anyway. Sorry. Naked I'm, French I'm, teacher. I'm giving, cool. I'm giving away too much of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it just ends with like, that's healthy. Good night. Yeah. That literally, that is it. And it will never be brought up in the movie again. He's like, oh, look at you, young man and his boobs. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> the, the phrase, this will never come up in the movie again, could, could be used a lot in this movie. That's true. <laughs> If if you go through this movie the way you watch Memento, it does it's a lot easier to watch. I'll just tell you that. <laughs> and speaking of which, Noah, in case you're listening, uh, this is where he tells his son that having a son is like being born again. Christian movie this totally movie. counts. Can't get mad at us. Yep. Can't get mad at us. So just as he comes down from his son's room, it's time 
for the Polly did something bad with uh, signatures, and okay. now they have no money. Scene. Okay, Andrew, uh, tell me if this is how it works. No, so, no, no. Okay, it, it's a no. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. because it's the sign stuff you gave me. It's really important. I just want to. I want a floating no to answer all of the legal this questions. Is a blanket. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. About, so, about everything in this movie. We're to believe that Polly gave power of attorney to their shady accountant and the the accountant like stole all their money and bought a house in Barbados or a hotel in the crib or something like that. So doesn't that mean that, that Paulie had power of attorney? I, it, it, <laughs> it, uh, well, you can't transfer a thing you don't have. So yes. And, and so also that's fucking Rocky's fault. Yeah. Hundo P he gave <laughs> yeah. power of attorney to a dumb alcoholic. <laughs> and, and also like, I, uh, again, pieces of paper are not magic, right? Like the, the, <laughs> the whole like, uh oh, you you sign because the movie literally says like, well, you thought you were signing an extension on your taxes, but you were actually signing over power of attorney to a, a, like that. That's what we call fraud. <laughs> Classic. Sign the paper, tape it to a different document. Yeah, move. yeah, yeah. like I, yeah, no, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't work. And I wanted the attorney to come over and like unplug Rocky's life support. I don't need any of that. Yeah, <laughs> I just, you know, I got power of attorney. I just figure. <laughs> and 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 you know, if you're robot and a mansion rich, like you have insurance, right? Like that. This is that it you. Rocky'd be fine, but but we have to <laughs> rewind everything to 1975 for this movie to work. Right. So yeah, yeah, because <laughs> right. otherwise the plot of this movie is Rocky, you gotta fight this boy, or you're a coward. Uh, no, <laughs> all right then, enjoy your mansion, robot <laughs> bitch. Go ahead and die right now. You've peaked, I would say. So we 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 cut to the lawyer's office where the lawyer again is explaining that the accountant because he signed the paper and paper is magic the accountant wasn't paying their mortgage he was shredding the money and using it to grow giant hamsters <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah and the uh, obvious like Covington and Burling you know lawyer here senior partner in a civil law firm says I have filed eight criminal lawsuits against the uh, no no you haven't not not unless you're <laughs> secretly moonlighting as the district attorney asshole you, <laughs> I am just, this district is great this technically is a lot awful movie as well so we're, we're killing two birds <laughs> with one stone here it's as lawyerly as it is christian also i don't know why they bring this up in the movie he's like i mean maybe i could do some commercials and they're like no nobody would want the heavyweight boxing champion of the world to do commercials yeah. who just defeated russia in an international match that the entire world was watching I you what are you gonna sell a plug-in grill <laughs> that grills all the battle that's not gonna work for a boxer yeah, so instead he talks to Adrian about how he might just have to fight that black guy. And she's like, no, you can't fight. You have to go to a doctor. Right, but but the lawyer is like, well, I don't know, man. Literally the only thing you could do at this point is uh, another sequel. That's all you can do. <laughs> That's it, yeah. It's just Rocky. I, at this point, I thought the lawyer is going to be like, yeah, it looks like you're out of options. You have to do Rocky Six. Oh, no, it's, uh, it's so terrible. <laughs> So he heads to the doctor at Adrian's encouragement. Um, <laughs> and this doctor is showing him his brain on, I want to say, an Atari 2. Oh, oh, an, an Atari 2. I, I, what what Ataris do you think there were, Eli? I don't know. I'm not sure. I know you had like calculators and then computers and then you I, were all in I charge of the world so and much. it was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, whatever it is, the doctor's like, OK, do you see the uh, the big skull and crossbones on your brain scan right there <laughs> see how uh the inside of your brain is like uh, spaghettios that's bad that's, that's uh bad. it's a condition uh -oh. boxers get it's called shitty brain and you have that <laughs> well what's amazing is there's a doctor translator he's like yes you have hemodola some pila of the scramulus and then the other doctor's like sorry uh, let me put this in terms you'll understand brain punch shitty bad brain. <laughs> <laughs> Also, they have an eye chart on their wall. Yes, yeah, you do. <laughs> right. But Rocky wants a second opinion. And he says, well, maybe the doctor's wrong. Uh, only God ain't wrong. And uh, one, because again, it's a Christian, Christian, Christian movie. Christian movie. Mm -hmm. Totally counts. And uh, the whole point is like, yeah, you, you're not going to be allowed to get 
license to fight. Like now we've diagnosed you with shitty brain. You can't box now. It's not like Tommy Morrison, but it's still bad. It's still bad. (laughs) And there's this weird moment in the scene where they're like, okay, well, obviously you're not going to be licensed to box. And he, he like pulls Adrian in and whispers in her ear. And she like, like she's got a shy toddler. She's like, Rocky would like to know that you won't tell anybody about his bad brain. And they're like, yeah, no, we're doctors. We won't yeah, tell yeah. anyone. <laughs> she says, can this doctor's visit be confidential? And they're like, uh, yeah, now that you said the word confidential, yes. Cool. <laughs> and spoiler, it won't be. Nope, no. it will not. So uh, now we cut over to Rocky selling a mansion and all of his very fancy belongings, but somehow not making any money (laughs) at at christie's auction house you're doing fine if you sell stuff at christie's fucking auction house you're not (laughs) out of money if you sell your belongings at christie's auction house and you don't come out in the black something weird happened (laughs) (laughs) yeah also we have this weird scene so the son is like moping on the motorcycle because he's lost a motorcycle in the auction they're trying to do this like, come on, kid, the motorcycle's been sold. But the extra or the under five is way too enthusiastic. So, like, he, like, side tackles the kid <laughs> off the motorcycle. He's like, get the fuck off the bike. It's not you somewhere. This was just sold to Jean-Luc Picard. Get the fuck out of here. It, it, in fairness, the kid is 100% being an asshole here, right? Like, that, yeah. that it, if, you, if you accept the insane plot of this movie that they're now broke and they have to sell all their stuff to make ends meet, like the, but I wanted to sit on this motorcycle that I'm four years too young to ride. Like, fuck you, kid. Like, <laughs> no. we're going we're gonna to put dinner on the table and you're going to like it. You know where you can cry? Anywhere. Yeah. Four people can cry <laughs> wherever they want. Wherever they want, as hard as they want. And because this movie hadn't gotten insanely nostalgic enough, we're now going to cut to Sylvester Stallone changing into his costume from Rocky 1 as though we wouldn't remember this was a Rocky movie without it. <laughs> I, God, you know, it, it, I, I, I realize, but like, this is kind of good filmmaking here, right? Like, they're, they're, they're in the attic and they're reenacting shot for shot a scene from 15 years ago to emphasize, like, how old Rocky is now. Because this is his, he's too old to fight now. Right, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I, I think I've accidentally slipped into self parody here, right? Like, this is, this is like, <laughs> this is like Arthur Dent appreciating the Vogon poetry, right? Like, to yeah, counterpoint exactly. the surrealism of the underlying metaphor. Oh, God. <laughs> I'll stop. It's a nice moment, though. I agree. Because Adrian walks in the attic and she's like, hey, man, you wearing your clothes from the 70s? Are are you Norman Batesing yourself? What the fuck is (laughs) happening? I'm into it. You want to get into it? Let's get into it. There's a chair up here. And they do. They kind of do. Yeah, they do a little role play. Yeah, Yeah, they, they actually do that. Rocky's like, oh, hey, look, it's the glasses. Uh. This is the first time I kissed you. I took these glasses off. Can you put them on so I so I can immediately take them back off? Like take them off you. But yeah, but it was weird because I had like a sly Stallone feeling in here where it was like, look, look, remember how good your performance was? How you were sort of shy and sort of alienated the trope of the damsel yeah, in distress, right? Remember how good you were, that and now great. you're just sort of like a totally different person in this movie. Oh, what? For no reason, you're just like loud and bossy. <laughs> Let's make Godfather 3. That's going to go great. Absolutely, yeah. (laughs) I know just the lady to start in. (laughs) So, yeah. So, Rocky moves back home to the slums because... Yes, of course. (laughs) Nothing between multi-millionaire mansion and the exact house you were living in when you met your wife five years ago how long this is a great question thank what you what year right? is it in this movie I think what it's- year is it in this how much time has passed in the rocky verse tm i don't know at this point in the movie yeah what do you, you fight like what once a year if you're like a, a heavyweight boxer so this should be like 1981 right well and and right when you're when you're at the top you can fight a couple of times a year right like, maybe a couple times yeah like right? holyfield okay. fought a couple of times a so year this is, the 70s. This, this yeah. is kind of works then right <laughs> All right. And I mean, that fits with the weirdly large amount of smoking cigarettes also yeah. in the movie. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. There's so a Sto- lot this, more of that. A lot. Yeah. Stallone starts this scene with a cigarette and it's, 
He's holding it in his mouth, which he should not do oh, with this weird, no. crazy mouth shape. Because you it's put a cigarette in, a in there. Circle. Yeah, it like that exaggerates the insane angle. Like the the lit parts facing back into his face now. And yeah, it's not going <laughs> He's well. He's burning his chin with it. Yeah. I haven't felt nothing on that chin in 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like hanging out at the old dive bar. A glass jaw would work for that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Turns out that dive bars aren't fun once you've been anywhere else. And <laughs> I've been great that dive this is bar. True. What are you talking about? Okay, I literally wrote in my notes, Q Heath saying that his dive bar is Fuck still you. off. No, you <laughs> didn't. It's right here in my you. notes. I am I like I, it. You, that's, it's, that's not, you just type that now. <laughs> Check the version history. It's an amazing right. bar. So now it's time for Burgess Meredith oh, to wonder aloud in this movie why he's in this movie. <laughs> Was he still alive? I think he was just barely still alive, but they couldn't get him to act, so they just used flashbacks of him only. Is that what happened here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah, and they're at his, they're at Mickey's old gym, which is Rocky's only remaining possession because of, of magic paper. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. We uh, the he says he left you one MacGuffin, but yeah, this is the <laughs> this is the flashback to the getting the cufflink of. Marciano and the get up you son of a bitch because Mickey loves you and again I I just want to point out how insane this scene is in contrast to the rest of this movie it would be like if did you fuck my wife was in the middle of Mighty Ducks 2 (laughs) slap (laughs) shot this is what happens when you find a guy in the Alps (laughs) yeah also question about this gym Um, (laughs) so before they closed it down they they brought in a good deal of rubble. Why would you do that? <laughs> there was an earthquake at the sale. The you bring thing. in empty cans that are crushed and rubble. And like, also, they like they left one, one boxing glove on the floor. So like, and a heavy bag. The, yeah, and heavy, so they're leaving this place, and they were like, "Should we take all the gloves?" No. And it was like, "No, I'm going to leave one glove on the floor. I'm going to dust it up with some rubble too, so it's yeah." And the, yeah, and and that's when we get the flashback to uh, to Mickey. So now it's time for some 1980s rap. Get ready, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Rocky moving back into his old house montage accompanied by rap uh, that I'm going to throw it out there is less good than anything the three of us on this podcast are able <laughs> I to do. I love this rap. I like that old timey rap. You don't yeah. like that like early like. Look, I loved when I was as good as all the rappers, but I think the time has come for <laughs> no, us to look back like, with yeah. clear eyes and open hearts. Yeah. At, it, <laughs> at, ap- apropos of absolutely nothing in this movie about how much it sucks to be super famous, make a ton of money, lose a ton of money, and then have to move back. MC Hammer wrote two songs for this movie. <laughs> oh, God. Was it really MC Hammer? Yeah, it really not was. This, oh. Not this not one. This one. This was, not this one. This was good. Yeah. This was just like rappity rap rap, rap rap <laughs> yeah. rap. And it's just like, it's so, I get so excited. I'm with you. I could listen to Run DMC like from now until the day I die. Old rap's amazing. You can hear them taking breaks and messing up. Yeah. It's the best. <laughs> it's the 1980s <laughs> incarnate in rap form. So, yeah, he's uh, he's like getting ready and packing away and everything. And then he's also warning his son that now that he has to go to public school, he better be ready for the hustle, the scam, the slip and slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's. He's clearly explaining, yeah, basically, like, you got to be smart in the street or else you just, guys will hustle you. Uh, Morgan, I'm going to say a bunch of slur words right here. You can't <laughs> yeah. really go and just cut it out and post. <sighs> you like so many retakes after a slur, 100%. Oh, so many. Oh, yeah. So and, many. And, 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 right, and the dichotomy is that the sun is supposed to be really smart, so they want to put, like, the polysyllabic vocabulary words in the mouth of Sage Stallone, but all they can come up with is <laughs> the word intend. And, intend. And, so, and Sylvester Stallone is like, oh man, intend. Oh, we, got, we, got, we got fucking Shakespeare over here. Like, <laughs> Look at Mr. Ned. SAT scores. Oh. Can we uh, one silver max? The word is Juan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, this is where they do the back and forth home team thing. God, but home team. either he doesn't understand his dad or the line doesn't make sense because he's like, what are we? And the kid's like, what? And what? I wanted so badly for Sly to be like, sorry, who am I? I have severe brain damage. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And he keeps saying this throughout the movie and nobody gets it. So right here he's like, whoa. And in real life, I'm quite certain the kid's just like, what? Oh, home home team. Is it because you keep saying that? I don't also feel like you want me to say it again. Home team is a weird catchphrase to introduce a in part five of your movie sequence that has never been there before and be in a boxing movie right like that's not a thing i'm not <laughs> what are we what are we the touchdowns yeah. that's right i don't know it's a boxing movie that has turn-based punching so maybe the home team it's like the bottom <laughs> yeah. of the ninth yeah, so right, you right, get fair. to punch yeah, yeah that's fair it's Rocky fun. does get to punch last. That's yeah. like a rule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could be like corner kicks. They could do a soccer comparison, but yeah. there's really not a baseball <laughs> thing. So, so he gives his son a very the first of many many sensual kisses on the mouth oh my that he will give him. It's it's yeah. a lot. This movie. It's a lot. And there's uh, we're gonna get to the next scene, but there's just one tiny moment I want to touch on. It's the crazy fat child that he walks past on his way into school. <laughs> Can we talk about this child? I don't know what happened. But just Please. this extra they hired, he's just, he's crazy. He's giant. He's he, the shape of Marshmallow Man. <laughs> and he's just staring directly into camera. He was like, they said there'd be pizza at the movie. Here. <laughs> and then the camera cuts away from him. Like they were like, shit, did you promise that guy pizza, Rick? <laughs> God damn it. Now we got to make Easy Rider too. <laughs> also, we meet the bullies real quick here. The kid walks into school and we see two bullies start fucking with him and one of them is e from entourage that's eric <laughs> that's which fits, e from entourage. it fits so goddamn perfectly that e from entourage would be the sh- shitty Got Irish his bully start in, this movie. in rocky five yep yeah i just i just have these kids as discount cobra kai's for the rest of the movie but yeah <laughs> well there you go that's a good description of entourage but <laughs> now we're like 30 minutes into the movie so it's time to meet the the plot Again, also, <laughs> this is uh, this is Tommy Gunn, a young up and coming boxer who came to the big city of Philadelphia to ask Rocky to train him. Yeah, <laughs> he's he like stalks him on the street. Somehow he knows where he's going and he like waits on like a lamppost because Rocky's going to like walk out of building that he knew was there. Maybe it was Mickey's gym. I don't know. But Tommy Gunn. Well, let's be realistic. Tommy Morrison, the boxer who's trying to act here, shows up for his first line way too fucking early. Yeah. <laughs> like, because Paulie and Rocky are talking and they're still finishing uh, several more lines. But Tommy Gunn gets there and he stands there forever. So they have to pretend this enormous guy with a mullet <laughs> isn't standing there, not saying anything. Inches from their face. Inches away. <laughs> And then he's late on saying yep. hello. They finally <laughs> finish their lines and he's like, line. Hi, hi, I box. Hi, hello. Rack. Boxing. Rocky. You have AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> and then because this scene wasn't poorly written and confusing enough, like lest you think we are complicating this any further, Don King emerges <laughs> like Aphrodite from the goddamn conch, like in between them. And he's like, Hello. <laughs> I'm also in this scene talking at the exact same time. Just a reminder, someone would like to fight you. <laughs> and, and, and and this, like, this entire plot, this is the manufactured, not the real plot of Don King, right, wants to get some kind of bout with Rocky. He doesn't care against who. He just needs to be producing a fight with Rocky Balboa in it. And it's like the movie kind of turns and stares at the screen and like the the closing credits of Ferris Bueller is like, hmm, if only Rocky needed money. And I had <laughs> money. And then, like, they forget that for 90. It's crazy. It's bonkers. They will forget it until 30 seconds before the end of the movie and then forget it. Yeah. Forget forgetting it again. Oh. We'll get there. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. You could tell that I'm glad you went through the, like, script rewrite history here because you can tell they're on author number seven right now. Yeah, at this point, the sixth authors, like he's sliding the sixth author's brain matter off of the pages. He's like, all right, this one's kind of still usable. (laughs) The only other thing I want to touch on about this scene is that the Rocky theme, as the guy leaves, the Rocky theme plays in the background, but hesitantly, like the piano is unsure it's a Rocky movie. Like, 
I'm sorry, just to be clear, right? Yeah. How are you making how are you making the piano do that? It's like halfway between the Rocky theme and the incredible Hulk sad Bill Bixby walking away. Yeah, he's he's pushing the question mark pedal on the piano. I a tiger, go fuck yourself. Yeah. There's no survivor in this movie. No, there's not. It's really sad. Not a sing survivor. Well, I think there was Rocky gonna five. fly now for a second. This this little fake gonna fly now and then maybe again near the end. Was there? Mm, a little possibly. Bit. We'll find out. So now we cut back over to school, and as he uh, teased us before, Rocky's son is gonna get mugged by Eve from by Eve. <laughs> <Yeah. Taraj. laughs> <laughs> This sets up quite the side plot. I will not spoil it right now. Oh, but. guys. Uh, Young people who have no idea what kind of movie you've dumped into. This is how movies used to establish he needs to learn to fight as a plot mechanism. Like someone would attack a main character and we'd be like, oh, that guy needs to learn how to fucking fight. That that, that kid is 13. He he 100 percent needs to learn how to fight. I mean, back back. Yeah. yeah, Thank you. I I, Look, if you don't. The streets of Philadelphia, they're slipping and sliding and jiving and juking. You got to know. (laughs) If he doesn't learn how to fight, he's going to get bullied by someone who looks like Eli. (laughs) That's fair. He's going to get bullied by E from Entourage. uh, The last part, no, not who I (laughs) pictured as the bully. And you don't look like E from Entourage, to be clear. I think I do. You think you look like a thin Irishman? That's what they tell me on the internet. I'm not on social media anymore, but I hear that's a (laughs) trending hashtag. Anyways, at the boxing gym. (laughs) Enough about how handsome Eli will I be am. played by Mickey Rooney in the I mean, biopic. <laughs> I'm I'm still on Facebook Messenger, so if you need to send me a message about how handsome I am, like <laughs> gas, like you can reach. And also, I'm still still on email, EliBosnick at gmail dot com. And just if you have right to my phone. guild jokes, send them to Heath Enright yeah. at gmail <laughs> Yeah, if you have any poor lunch lady drug dealer jokes, those go right over to Heath. Uh, so now we're. We're back at the boxing gym. Heath was a lunch lady. Uh, now we're back at the boxing gym. That was gym the premise Heath, of that? I, okay. That was the... <laughs> thank I could, you. I can see that. <laughs> so we're back at the I gym. I worked in the dining hall as a financial aid student. I, anyway. You were a lunch lady. And then a okay. drug did dealer. You, did, Go did you wear you the hairnet? Drug I was a drug dealing lunch lady. That's correct. <laughs> were you, were you, <laughs> were you wearing the hairnet? No, I had a buzz. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair. I had a beard net. I, I had that's, a beard net. That's yeah. exactly if I were ever to buy drugs, and we all know I'm a precious little snowflake, so that'd be <laughs> not. It would definitely be from a guy whose beard was in a beard net. That that yeah, yeah that's a little bit of credit. I'm Eli Bosnick. <laughs> Head over to <laughs> patreon.com slash godawful, and this summer we'll make Andrew buy drugs not once but four times in a row. <laughs> and we'll say, put it on YouTube. We'll do it in a legal state and just make him go in an order. We'll film it the whole time. <laughs> You can make this happen. Next Matreon. <laughs> Goals. All right. So he's in the boxing gym and Rocky is giving boxing advice. Um, yeah. Would we say advice, though? <laughs> OK. OK. This is what I was getting to. All of Rocky's boxing advice in this movie will be either insanely obvious or outright wrong. Right? <laughs> It'll be like, His advice here is literally the key to boxing is... T- you, you hit the other guy and you, uh-huh. you don't get hit. Oh. That's what he's saying. See, I was yep. doing the first one. <laughs> yeah, and Tommy is so moved by this excellent advice that he decides to go in the ring and do a little sparring. He's just but, like, you know, thanks, champ. Yeah, let me write that down. Punch other guy, me not getting punched. Okay, got it. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Right, yeah, but he jumps in the ring and he decides he's going to spar without the headgear. And he just like sh- just starts slamming the other guy like it's I, a full yeah, this contact is, boxing match. This, yeah. this sequence is really, really disturbing, right? Like it is because it, it's it's meant to show like Tommy Gunn is an unstoppable, rage filled punching machine, but also like you're supposed to root for him until the heel turn, right? Spoilers. Uh, <laughs> and, and like, how can you like, like he's nuts? And, uh, all right. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, all right, this movie now has three plots, but what about a love story that we can establish and then literally never touch on again? Well, I'm glad you asked because random girl from Rocky's son's school is here to apologize for E 
mugging him. <laughs> and, and, and for the second, but not the last time in this movie, it is blatantly ripping off Karate Kid here. Like the, 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 the <laughs> like kind of chubby strawberry blonde girl here. She is definitely no Elizabeth Shue. She's no E shoes. No, yeah, absolutely no. not. But, uh, but she checks out Sage Stallone's ass and it's like, you have a pretty nice ass for an Italian. For an Italian? Is that, is that a thing? Is it a stereotype and can we reinforce it? <laughs> like, I, I will do whatever it takes <laughs> to just be like, unlike those small ass Italians, am I right? I'll say it to everyone when I'm checking out at the grocery store, <laughs> to my mechanic. I just, let's, <laughs> let's swirl it around in the world. Hashtag small ass Italians. <laughs> let's, Sorry. Let's rank, I, let's rank the male asses by race. What do you guys think? Is the best male ass. Is I'm it Italian? Out. I'm out. I quit the show. I just Googled small ass Italians and I would like to apologize to our listeners. <laughs> and on behalf of the whole puzzle in a thunderstorm company. Um, but yeah, so I, sorry about this small ass <laughs> What did comment. Google say? <laughs> We're not going into it. Andrew, <laughs> there's, there's 45 minutes of crying that just got cut out of the yeah. show. So here's the thing about this. You have a nice ass comment. How old is this actress? 13? 12? Yeah, they're like middle school. Old enough yeah. to smoke. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's super duper weird, right? Like the thing about Karate Kid is you're like, look at them. They're 17, but you're like, nah, not 17. Those are adults, and that's why they're attracted to each other. But this fucking nine-year-old is like, mm, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. <laughs> and you're like, no, Rocky Five, bad. <laughs> <sighs> Nonetheless, uh, romance developed established yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now it's time to cut over to ba 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 da ba polly that character <laughs> we all know and love <sighs> yep and uh th this is when uh tommy gun finds him on the street again in a different place <laughs> somehow and he's just like um can uh, you manage me cuz I asked you before and you just you said manager over and over for like 20 over minutes and over again. And you answer because we need to do the movie. Yeah. To which Rocky responds. Hey, you're my son now. Come to my house and live with me. <laughs> God, right. You know, I, and, and look, I realize this is more Vogon poetry appreciation, but like I do kind of like this scene, right? Like it's written as Rocky thinks of Tommy as the son he never had because his own son is a nerd and is scrawny. And I, I mean, if this movie were at all competently written. Yeah, but again, <laughs> he does have a son right. who will spend the next nine tenths of the movie staring resentfully <laughs> an inch and a half from Tommy Gunn's face, <laughs> which makes this scene fucking bananas. Yeah, well, and huh? speaking of which, it's time to go to dinner where Rocky and Adrian will react to hearing their child has been <laughs> mugged and robbed like they shifted his art class to first period. <laughs> I and Polly's reaction to this is the best, though. Oh, throughout the scene? Yes. Amazing. So the kid gets home and he's like, yeah, I got beat up. Uh, e from Entourage stole my coat. It's ridiculous. And immediately Paulie's like, baseball bat to the face. <laughs> oh, Hit him with a bat. Oh, Hit my God. And, throughout the scene. Uh, and, and, and so in the movie I'm creating in my head, right, the better one, like I, I want Robert De Niro's voiceover from Casino here. Like, hey, he's a little guy, but. You know, you steal Rocky Jr.'s coat, he comes back with a bat. You beat him with a knife, <laughs> he comes back with a gun. And if you come after him with a gun, you better kill him because he'll keep coming back until you're dead. I guess what I'm saying is, <laughs> can we do Casino next? It's kind of a Christian movie. Right? Can I borrow that pen? Oh, it's a nice man. pen. Let me borrow Figure that pen. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it, it is true that this movie, first of all, not only in this movie will the entire scene move on with Polly just repeating, hit him in the face with a <laughs> yeah. baseball bat. The movie will move on and Polly will just be like, sorry, I feel like no one's addressed my fucking baseball bat theory. Oh, no, they'll baseball ramp bat. it up. They'll ramp it up. So like he, he says baseball bat to the face. And then Adrian's like, uh, we're raising our son not to attack baseball people bat with to the face? weapons. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's like, what about baseball bat to the face? Right. And then Rocky is like, compromise. I'll teach him to murder with punching, not a bat. And then they ramp it up even further with Tommy Gunn, who's like, yeah, my dad was an alcoholic and uh, now I punch people for a living. So there you go. I mean, cycle of violence. It works out great sometimes. I'm endearing now. I'm a protagonist. 
when you think of it, it's kind of a family business. Am I right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> tough crowd. I forgot you were abused in the first movie, but it seems like you guys are sort of adorable I, I, I enemies now. I think this movie now. has forgotten that, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and again, because Rocky has said maybe to managing Tommy, Tommy lives in their basement now. That's what they're going to establish is that, hey, Tommy, you got a place to stay? And Tommy's like, no, you know, I was actually thinking of, and he's like, you live here, you live in my child's room, you sleep in his bed, I kiss your mouth. <laughs> You'd be replacing my son. It would be great. It's not like you're replacing it. Well, it's literally replacing. He has to sleep with Uncle Paulie, who is urinating himself right now. So uh, he probably won't as much later. He's probably uh, emptied out a little bit. It'd be cool. <laughs> so now it's time to check in the basement. And it turns out that Rocky's son has made a nice little trophy case for all of his heavyweight championship of the world gloves and belts. But it's like, it's like the way my mom did all my OM medals, like second and third place OM medals with the titles hidden so that nobody knows. What's OM? Uh, Odyssey of the oh, Mind. Oh, Odyssey of the Mind. <laughs> Nailed it. Double wow. nerded. You, had, you, you had, got two, you got double teamed by two nerds at the same time. Is, yeah. So not a sport. Uh, definitely oh. not. Yeah. It's a sport oh, no. of the imagination. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I also played baseball, so I want to register a hard no <laughs> on Odyssey of the Mind being a sport. Also, I got kicked off the Catonsville Odyssey of the Mind team because I didn't go to enough practices. That's that. <laughs> I would pay all the money in the world. I know you're not adult, Andrew, at that time, but in my mind you are, <laughs> where someone's just like, Andrew, can I talk to you for a second? Um, I don't think you're as committed <laughs> To this, how should I say it? Mind Odyssey, as you need to be, <laughs> and we're gonna have to let you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, they did. And despite the, despite the fact that the the team was way better when I was on it than when I was off it, but you know, we all knew. To that. be fair, you were in your third year of college <laughs> when you joined the team. <laughs> so yeah, he's uh, he's showing the basement and the trophies and stuff, and 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 this is the first moment of like, uh oh. Rocky's son is jealous of Tommy. And, and look, if this were, as Andrew said, competently written, it might establish something. But the way it actually plays is, you know, my manager and my, my major inspiration once told me, Dad, listen to me right now. This is the only moment I need you to listen to me right now in this very second. Otherwise, I'll resent you forever. <laughs> Dad, I'm related. I'm made of your cum. I am here. And he's like, that is great. There definitely is a Seth MacFarlane kind of stewy quality to Sage Stallone. Where he's like, Dad, 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 Dad. You're going to yeah, miss it. You're going to miss it. Dad. Just starts dad. licking up and down the side of Rocky's face. You still want him, Tommy? Huh? <laughs> oh, him. oh, that went in a weird direction. Yeah. And he's just like, that. Hey, relax. I'm talking to Tommy, who's better than you. He'll, yeah. he'll probably live past 2012. But a little. <laughs> this is going to be great. Don't 20, worry. 2013. Definitely. No such thing as blood test between yeah, friends. False positive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, and this is where Rocky hands down his second great piece of wisdom in the movie. Fear is good and bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so dumb. He's like, so, um, who's your, who's your best friend back home? And bef before Tommy can answer, he's like, wrong, it's Frankie Fear. And everybody's like, what? Dude, no idea what you are ever saying. Home team? How badly did you want him to reach behind a shelf and pull out a sock puppet with, like, dripping <laughs> blood on it and be like, uh-oh, it's Freddie here. I'm going to rape your ears again, Sly. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm going to make you do Cobra 2. Don't make me do The Expendables 3, please. <laughs> I and got hurt on the set of <laughs> Bullet to the Head and nobody told me. <laughs> and this is when Stallone gets another giant, giant amount of riffing because he's just like, <laughs> I said, Frank, you fear that's alliteration. Um, I'm going to say different uh, other F words now. And then he's like, <laughs> fear is like fire. Fire is hot, hot, fire, fear, fighter. Uh, Flame. Flight. There's no one nailed it. Fandango. Feelings. <laughs> oh, no feelings. <laughs> Gotta yeah. be around forever. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he delivers that weird spoken word aneurysm, and we cut back to school <laughs> where uh, Rocky's son gets punched and robbed again. That's the scene. 
That's, yeah, that's the scene. Rain. Yep, that is. That's it. And now it's time for Rocky to take Tommy to Father Carmine for a blessing. Christian it, movie. Not, not, okay. not only that, but this is definitely Chekhov's priest. I mean, he goes off in the third act. Just wait for it. He <laughs> sure <laughs> fucking does. He in the, does. I, I'll tell you what, listener. We're about to take a little commercial break. You go ahead and pause this podcast. Get out a notebook, a pen, have a hot latte, maybe a mocha, and write down whatever you could possibly imagine Father Carmine <laughs> is going to do in the third act. You're wrong. Oh, you oh, are you wrong. wrong. <laughs> oh, it's so good. But yeah, this is Rocky just going up. To, he's not even in the church. He's just like, no. from from a window, yeah. he sees Car Father Carmine in a window, and he's just like running on the street with Tommy. Yeah, no, it's, like, to say, it's to say anything. He's just missing the boombox here. <laughs> right. Well, it's like they're trying to do the scene from the first movie, but they couldn't afford Catholicism. So, you know, like when they do remakes of movies and they, so you just get like the two minute intro where Leslie Nielsen walks through and is like, hello, what are you doing here? And you're like, ah, okay. he's the one that was in the first one. That's what they're doing with the Catholic church. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, uh, Rocky has Father uh, Carmine bless Tommy Gunn here. Just, you know, in general. It, uh, it, it never hurts to have no blessings. Uh <laughs> Look at him asking for prayer. God's not real. Stupid Christian movie. Adorable. Yeah. <laughs> well, the God of the universe has now blessed Tommy Gunn in a way that would make God look super dumb if Tommy doesn't win the movie in the end and stay the good guy. And on that note, we're going to take a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will the cinematic tour de force that is the final act of this movie Carry Heath through a confusing series of strong emotions and sexual responses? Yes, it will. So stay tuned for the <laughs> spectacular conclusion of Rocky Five. Hi, I'm uh, Rocky Balboa. You know, uh, all the problems that uh, have ever come in my life have had the same solution as punching. Now, uh, sadly, uh, that ain't true for hair loss. 66% of men started to lose their hair by age 35. And uh, once you notice this, the hair is thinning, it can be too late. But the solution, it, it ain't punching. Wait, it, it ain't punching? The no! Ain't punching. It's for him! Oh, hey, it's, it's Uncle Paulie, the, the beloved character, alcoholic Uncle Paulie. Beloved. Uh, so what's uh what's for hims dot com? That's right, Rocky, a beloved character who was always a good guy in this series. For hims dot com, it's a one stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA approved products to help you treat hair loss. Oh, this is FDA approved. Yeah. You mean like the, the stuff the, the Russian guy was doing? No, no, Rock. These are prescription solutions backed by science. Whoa. Science. And is there no punching required at all? No punching required. Order now. Our listeners get started with 4M's complete hair kit for just $5 today. Right now while supplies last and subject to doctor's approval. See website for full details and safety information. This will cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or the pharmacy somewhere else. So go to forhims.com slash cam. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash cam. Forhims.com slash cam. For hymns. For hair loss. For everything else besides hair loss, though, there is punching. That's right. But very young, you ever considered dying earlier? Every single day. Yeah. I try. You want to go like halfsies or something? Oh, well, like Courtney Love. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. Welcome to Phil's House of Financial Mismanagement. How can I help you, boys? Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I was like. The, the winner of my last movie, uh, 
you know, rich now. Uh, I literally beat Russia in, in name America, which is you kind of left me uh, uh, without a plot, you know, like no plot. Ooh, ooh, yeah, that that is rough. Tell you what, sign here, uh, and and here, uh, and 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 initial uh, here. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, no, excellent. See now, as as you and and as all other movies know, paper is magic. So now right, I have all right, your money, paper. and I just sent it to the bottom of the ocean. Oh, uh, you, you did? Yep. Bottom, bottom of the ocean. Bo- bottom of the ocean. Uh, okay, uh, there's a lot of money lost there. Well, okay, what, what about all my, my property and stuff? Uh, that's got to have some value. I, I have, like, a bunch oh, of property. Oh, yeah, yeah. Houses um, and stuff. Huh, let's see. Oh, um, uh, tell you what, uh, why don't you sign this piece of paper? Oh, magic paper again. Okay. Yep, see, now, uh, oh, yeah, here too, right? Uh, now you owe exactly one finale's worth of dollars to the government. Oh, that's, that's actually perfect. That's the perfect amount for the finale. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. So, um, I, I, you're all set for your uh manufactured plot for your movie. Uh, which which one is this again? As uh, uh, two, three, five, I think. Oh, Have you ever considered, you know, dying in your prime, Kurt Cobaining it? Yeah, every single day, all the time. And we're back. When we left off, God was blessing Tommy Morrison and this week's movie choice. And now it's time for Tommy's <laughs> first big fight with Rocky in his corner as manager or trainer. Or they, they don't know the roles of any of the training stuff. Anyway, this starts with a close up shot of a Jesus mosaic because I guess they're fighting in a church. So, again, this counts so hard. This counts. It's this all counts. Christian. His fight is in a church. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. It's a way better use for a church, but I do think it's weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is supposed to be like low budget, early fight. I don't know. But yeah, they're in church and they're fighting, and Tommy's not very good. He'll, he'll need to. Overcome quite the hurdle and have several montages. Well, luckily, luckily, he's got the amazing side coaching of Rocky. This is how their actual first pep talk goes. I'm losing. You're winning. I'm losing. You're winning. You know what? I am winning. And then he goes out and wins. <laughs> and, then, and then Stallone gets so mad at Tommy Morrison in real life yeah. for going off script there. Because Morrison's just like, this guy's killing me. I'm losing. He's killing me. I'm, I'm getting killed. Shut up. Stallone <laughs> gets so mad and he yells at him. You see his face <laughs> and this long pause and then they keep going. It's the best. And, and and we are treated to what I think is the best demotivational speech since the Animaniacs spoof of Patton, right? Where, where Yaka's is like, we're going to war, gentlemen, and I won't lie to you. Some of you won't be coming back and the rest of you definitely won't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and oh, then he tells God. him that he's sitting on his shoulder, like Meredith Burgess told him. So now, now you got sort of like a human centipede shoulder thing going oh, on. But, but yeah, he wins. Thanks. Sure, yeah, that'll haunt my nightmares. Yeah, which means it's time for a resentful son montage, the first of its kind, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. This will be a montage of Rocky and Tommy Gunn doing Rocky training stuff while his son stands an inch behind them, glaring. An Alma montage. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> yeah. the best. Cool. Also, question about uh, boxing training. You've come to the right place. They're throwing the medicine ball. You know how they're throwing the big heavy medicine ball back mm-hmm. and forth? 90% of boxing. Doesn't feel like that's going to help with boxing. <laughs> no. Why would that help? It's the key just... to boxing. They, You know what they say? Punching is like throwing a medicine ball, but with your arms. <laughs> okay. That's the old phrase. Oh, oh I learned something here today. <laughs> We're getting Rocky Jr. just like sadly training by himself and he's throwing medicine ball just like to himself. It's <laughs> it's so sad, like like up against a tennis wall, but it doesn't bounce back at all because it's a medicine ball. He's got to walk over and pick it up. Walk over, pick it up. <laughs> over, over. It's so dumb. The only thing I want to point out about this montage is that we cut in with the evil Don King guy watching Tommy winning his boxing and eating a bag of marshmallows, which is a weird choice. <laughs> Wait, 
I missed that. I, okay. I missed that too. I watched this movie two and a half times. Wait, Don Don King was eating marshmallows? Yep. Don King character is like watching the TV and like doing the like, hmm, this Tommy guy might be my secret way in, but he is doing it marshmallow. while eating marshmallows. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they get a bunch of stuff with that wrong with Don King. Cause like earlier he was supposed to be doing the evil, like, call on the phone like oh you're the only way you can get out of this is do my fight and make me money and you money and he's supposed to be swishing the brandy you know like an evil guy <laughs> but he's got like like an, like an antique crystal wine glass full of red wine and he's sipping it like fancily it doesn't work at all no. none yeah. of his food stuff makes any sense or yeah, drink he, stuff he he has the candy dish from uh from the simpsons right the old lady glick like it holds candy, Ned. That's it. Ninety dollars, <laughs> and it chokes and it's on filled, a Werther's. <laughs> yeah, it's filled with like an ounce of cheer wine, too. Yeah, yeah. that. Oh God, I it's love that scene. phenomenal. <laughs> and, and also, one other thing during this montage, Rocky and Tommy are doing like every father son trope they can think of just to get Alma all pissed off in the background. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're like riding the tandem bicycle together and like three-legged <laughs> racing and side-by-side uh, -side bathtubs like a Cialis commercial. I don't know. It, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. And again, this entire montage is just punctuated with Rocky's son, who is played by Sylvester Stallone's real son, just staring daggers at the whole... So I, I wanted the montage yes. to screech to a halt and for them to be like, are you just standing there? Nothing. No. Anyways. Is, is, is this montage going to lead to a problem down the line? No. No. Let's no, no. see. In real life? You would say you're standing in the four of this shadow. So <laughs> <laughs> now we're back at school and it's time for Rocky's son to beat up his bullies. <laughs> I love this movie because I get to watch E from Entourage get punched in the face like nine times. That's wonderful. Row. That's really good. And let's face it. Fights between children absolutely go multiple rounds. This is very realistic. <laughs> One of these kids to go back and spit into buckets. <laughs> but no, he beats up his bully and the bully's sidekick has this amazing moment where he's like, I abandon you in your hour of need. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he shakes his hand because when you beat someone up, you, you're friends. That is how fighting works. Yeah. Like once you beat the bully, you offer the truce because, I mean, let's face it, like James Kerrigan is like six inches taller than you and like 50 pounds heavier than you. And you just got that like one lucky punch in. And, you know, like if you ever fight him again, he would just kick your ass twice. I, I, I'm, I like that we get little reality. bits. Yep. Just get a little, no, little bits. It's just a bit. What happened in your life? This <laughs> no. is clearly an Andrew story. Yeah. No. It. it and never mind. <laughs> when Andrew was fucking seven and went to high school, he clearly <laughs> <laughs> somehow beat up a bully one time it was this exactly uh, happened to him and i and you do and you offer the truce because you're like <laughs> this was totally a fluke yeah anyway patrons <laughs> tune in after god awful movies this week and heath will tell you how great his dive bar is while andrew tells you about the time he beat up a bully all right so it is great you get hot dogs for free oh, with a pitcher free hot dogs sounds great so <laughs> Rocky and Tommy are back at the gym I could, I and they're training. And again, <laughs> like they don't have enough boxing words for anything close to a training montage scene. Because again, Rocky is explaining what he explained as his first piece of advice. The key is to hit and not get hit back again. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So the key to not getting hit though. <laughs> According to this movie, is to train with blowing soap <laughs> bubbles. Yep. Uh, oh. is, that, is that a real boxing thing? And do, do you guys actually know anything about boxing? Is that is there any way this could possibly be a real boxing thing? I don't know. I hope so because if it is, my dog is an amazing boxer. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Match the pug, world championship. Watch out for it this summer. <laughs> oh, Stallone blowing soap bubbles is adorable. And you know, you know, he got soap in his mouth a bunch of times. <laughs> so you got to stop drinking it, Sly. If you're not picturing Mike Tyson skipping through a field, blowing bubbles with a little pink handle thing, like then you're not the listener. Oh, see, now I was picturing him skipping through a field like threatening bubbles. Like, oh, bubbles, <laughs> I'm going to fuck you till you love me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mike, you can just punch him. No, I literally can't. Wrong. Don't bubble miss wrong. me. Wrong, 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 wrong. Bite your ear off. Yeah. I'm a, I a, need some help. That's a different bubbles. I'm a bubble. I don't have ears. I'm an it man four. You making fun of my voice, no bubble? <laughs> I'll kill you. Uh, all right. And then, so we get a little more montage of Tommy winning some more. And this is where we get Don King's signature move for the movie. Whenever this character will watch boxing and enjoy it or not enjoy it, he will go, <laughs> and this is the first of such incidents in the film. Also, just side note, I'm quite certain I could be a professional boxer. Because soap bubbles, check, and slip the jab, check. That's it. Got it. Right? You, know, you know them both, so you are ready to go. You need a little speed bag, a little medicine ball throwing, but you're ready for the world tournament. <laughs> I don't think those ones, I could do a medicine ball. Heath, you want to toss around the medicine ball a little later? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the point of this training and boxing montage is that Rocky should be at home congratulating his son for assault instead of training a world champion to win back the money so that they don't have to live in poverty anymore. He's the bad guy. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. And, 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 and this was the point where I, I realized that the plot of this boxing movie about boxers co-starring a professional boxer hinges on the fact that no one involved in the movie in any way whatsoever understands the difference between a manager and a promoter. <laughs> I, it, I, like I, I, it is kind of like the way Die Hard Two required finding a cast and crew that had never been in an airport. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's a series of tubes. Right. Yeah. So he, so we watch Tommy, who is being managed by Rocky, get signed by the Don King promoter, and and at the end of this montage, I just want to be clear: does he gift him both an apartment and a lady? Okay. It wasn't clear. The lady for sure. That yeah. was a prostitute that he bought for Tommy. I'm quite certain about that. But she sticks around. It's like a permanent prostitute. I thought it was more like an arranged marriage. <laughs> okay. And the the apartment, it seemed like he was showing off his own, like Don King was showing off his apartment. But then he hands keys to Tommy, which was confusing. But then we find out that Tommy was given a car. So I thought that was the keys to the car. So now I'm lost in the plot. I have no idea what the details are and I don't know what's happening in this movie. <laughs> but the movie shows lots of clips from other movies in this movie. So I thought that we, we had just slipped into Wall Street for a minute, right? Like the, <laughs> the redhead is Darien, like the new apartment, like the car, like it just, yeah. Tommy Gunn loves Anacott Steve. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, see, now I was hoping that we would really get the dialogue here. We would just be like, this is where I live, not sure why I'm showing it to you. My apologies. Anyways, here's an arranged marriage and a new car. I love you. Bye bye. This is how boxing works. Boxing. Yep. This is boxing now. You want me to blow soap bubbles? No. So now no. we're going to cut to them watching National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation <laughs> in the movie. And again, the movie loves taunting us with much better movies we could be watching. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good scene where he's going. He's kicking Santa in the face out on the front lawn. <laughs> I enjoy that. So he he pulls he pulls Adrian aside. Rocky pulls Adrian aside in this scene. He's like, "Yo, Adrian, uh, wait, let me get as close to our son as physically possible." I'm thinking of giving Tommy my most precious <laughs> object. I have this, and I also have a sweater that says, "You are my only son." I was thinking I would get him. <laughs> yeah. I have an earring now. <laughs> he does. What the. F fuck is happening with this <laughs> earring this okay so um ultimate best worst of all time i should have mentioned this earlier oh yeah the son out of nowhere right this is the first scene he has it on this ridiculous giant spike ball on a chain with like retractable razor blades yeah. like he's go go from kill bill it's 35 feet of gold mesh. It is it, no no, it is it is a chandelier from like every Elton <laughs> John video in the early 80s. It's so big. It and oh, it's gosh. every earring I've ever ignored, right? Where a guy's just like, <laughs> "Yeah, man, I'm really into snowboarding. I don't know if you ever snowboarded at all." And I'm just like, "Earring, earring." <laughs> so, true story, I mentioned that I was watching Rocky 5 <laughs> to a friend of mine. And as soon as I said Rocky Five, he was like, earring, son has a crazy <laughs> earring. That's the movie with the earring, right? Yeah. 
That's the earring. Movie. And you know what? Yep. To be fair, if this movie had been called Rocky Five colon the movie with the earring, it would have been a better, <laughs> more accurate title. So we we cut back to Don King and Tommy, and in case we weren't getting the you know implicit message of those montages, he's like, "Why don't you drop Rocky and then let me sign you? I'll be your new." Whatever term we're using, because you and him don't have a contract expidimus magic numbers, magic words. <laughs> and Tommy's like, oh, I don't know. I really like Rocky. And he's like, here's $20,000. And Tommy Gunn's like, yeah, fuck Rocky. I am entirely a villain for the rest of the movie. <laughs> and, and so okay. now it's time Thunder for my favorite moment in this entire <laughs> film. It is when Sylvester Stallone introduces Santa for one hour and 42 minutes. <laughs> he's, Listener, he's the best. this movie is on Netflix. It's on Prime. You don't need to watch the whole thing. But if you don't watch Sylvester Stallone stammer his way through the sentence, look, it is Santa, you are living an incomplete <laughs> life. Hey, would you look and see oh, what this guy right here is coming down the stairs? He's almost down the stairs. This guy over here. Up the stairs, up and down the stairs. Santa words, <laughs> reindeers, <laughs> roof, success. The length of this introduction cannot be overestimated. There is no amount Snow. of time. No, I thought of another one. Snow. <laughs> yeah. North Pole. I'm still going. Shh. So then he, uh, mm. then he insists that his son sit on Santa's lap. You know, like you do. <laughs> a totally normal activity. Alcoholic Santa's lap yeah, because Polly Polly is fucking Santa Claus, <laughs> and he could not care less about being Santa, and it's my favorite thing. <laughs> and again, these are teenage kids. The request that he sit on Santa's lap is insane. He might as well be like, "All right, everybody, it's Christmas time. Let Uncle Polly change your diapers." Now you change my diapers. Now you change my diapers. <laughs> but but no, we're, this is supposed to be like the son finally rebelling once and for all scene. So he's like. Hey, why don't you want to sit on Santa's lap? And he's like, you weren't there for me, Dad. And he's like, what are you talking about? I've been there for you the whole movie. And he's like, literally the opposite. And he storms out. Is your earring get bigger? It's like <laughs> two feet long now. It's, the scene just started. How did it get bigger? All encompassing. And then, Does that hurt your ear? You hit him in the eye now. And now, just in the middle of all of this family drama, who should show up? But Don King and Tommy to tell him that Tommy is signing with Don King. Yeah, and 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 this movie decides that the the beat they're going to use to show you that Don King is the villain is him showing up to Christmas in his big limo, not at all the exact same limo that Rocky ran home in <laughs> forty it's, minutes ago. Yep. Uh, really, this movie is geez. really counting on a lack of object permanence yeah. in its viewership. <laughs> yeah, no, the memento that that's that's the right way to watch this movie. Yeah. yeah. So so Don King shows up in his limo, and Adrian's out there with Polly, and she's like, y y "Polly, you got to deal with this guy. I can't deal with this guy." So he starts walking in. Don King and Tommy they start walking in the house, and <laughs> Polly says. Yo, Rocco, guess who's coming to dinner? Eh, maybe don't say that when it's a black guy. No, nope. I'm just saying. <laughs> Again, this movie is the post-2016 politics of Rocky movies, right? Because Rocky was like, what are you talking about? It's about a young man becoming a champion, not about black fear at all. And Rocky V's like, hey, it's another black guy coming towards your house, Rocky. Stand your ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's me, the lovable character Paulie, who you've always loved and gotten along with. Oh god. I'm on your side. Yeah, there is no doubt that Uncle Paulie is like a precinct chairman for Donald Trump <laughs> in twenty sixteen. Like uh oh. Absolutely. Maybe Thanks. he's just a big Sidney Poitier fan. I don't know. Let's be fair. Let's be fair. We don't know. <laughs> he pulls out he pulls out a worn VHS. No one ever wants to watch this with Unbelievable. me. <laughs> Unbelievable. Right. But yeah, Tommy tells him that hey, I'm gonna go with Duke and and Sly's really upset, and he's like, "Oh no, you did, can't believe you did this to me!" And he has like a like a brain attack in the middle of it, which is <laughs> which is shown to us as a flashback from a first person's perspective of getting punched in Rocky Four. Yeah, and so this whole thing is Tommy Gunn 
leaving Rocky as a manager slash coach slash whatever the fuck his job is and going to Don King. Yeah. And he shows him Don King gave him this car. And as if that's a bad thing. Why is that a bad thing? Like Don Don King is clearly the good guy and Rocky's fucking stupid. Like you should want Don King to be your manager if he got you a car and more money instead of a guy with severe brain damage that is about to have an attack. <laughs> Yeah, and so A, the car is very clearly the 6000 SUX from RoboCop, so I definitely wanted this car. Like, at every moment that it was on the screen, I was like, oh, God, if I could have driven that in 1987. Like, oh. <laughs> you have you have weird desires. I know. I know. I just want to drive uh, a car from 1987 over my high school bully, <laughs> then go get a drink and some free hot dogs with <laughs> It's going to be great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Morgan, Morgan, yeah. you got it. You got it. Morgan clean, knows. Clean Morgan edit. <laughs> Doesn't pause. need to edit it because he can beep it out. Anyways. Two, three, four, pause. <laughs> now we cut to Rocky's son hanging out with his friends outside of the old timey sock hop. I don't know what this, this, <laughs> this, scene, this scene literally just <sighs> exists because they had a fight inside the house. And so they're going to make up outside of the house. Uh, the, yeah. the, this scene also exists so that the SAG can put cigarettes in the mouths of the 13 year old actors in this movie. Like, ah, 1990. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Cause they yeah. are without a doubt, like, uh, just blowing through some Marlboros right there on the, oh, without Real. these kids were, they, they put out a casting <laughs> notice for kids who smoke and everyone applied. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, there's a crazy moment here where he's about to like do the little makeup speech with his son, and as he walks over, love interest girl who we will never see or hear from again goes, "Are you gonna hit him?" And I was like, "Ah, 1980s." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This this whole scene, well, whole movie and backstory of movie, but this scene in particular is very dark. At this point, the kids they're all like huddled around the convenience store. They're smoking their cigarettes. <laughs> And uh, Rocky Jr. is like, I need to get out of this town. Yeah. Let's hitchhike to the Jersey Shore. Whoa. Yeah. That is the saddest aspiration ever expressed. That was terrifying. And then uh, Rocky shows up and sort of congratulates him for the cigarettes and sort of chastises him at the same time. Ah, the 80s. Which isn't clear. Hey, son. I don't know if you should be smoking like that. Gets side tackled by Philip Morris. Next take. Hey, son, look, you look awesome when you smoke like that. But don't steal mine, okay? Great. You can nice, keep that. rich flavor. Yeah. I yeah. have four out of five doctors recommend that cigarette. I'm going to kiss you on the neck now. Which he does. He kisses yeah. him on the neck. And Rocky Jr. freaks the fuck out. He goes for a kiss on the neck. And he's like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> He's going to he's going to get him later, though. It's, oh, it's no question. not the end of the father son kissing. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, he'll get him. He'll get him good. But yeah, he says home team and then the kid says home team. And this <laughs> unending scene is over, which means now it is time for the big fight. Tommy Gunn's chance at the, the title title, which he gets. Yeah. Now, against U Union Kane, I yep. believe is the name. The guy from yeah, Rome. why? Why is he? Why is his nickname Union? Right, like that's not a pun off of Kane. I, I, I couldn't no, figure no. it out. There's it was very there. strange. Oh wait, maybe he's anti-Confederate. Ooh, that's Ooh. possible. <laughs> Big North fan. We're woke. Got See? it. Sure. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a, it's a woke movie. I've always <laughs> said are. Rocky Five is a woke movie. <laughs> so here's we are my on the north side of the Civil War. To be clear, here's cool. my question. Here's my question now. Do fight promoters get to be the promoter and announce at the match as well? Because <laughs> well, that's what Don I mean, King is doing. I feel like he just brought his like magical karaoke set that plugs into any PA system <laughs> right. and just like push the let's get ready to rumble guy out of the way. And well, yeah, he elbows the real Michael Buffer out of the way. Like this may be Michael Buffer's first movie. This is before he was, you know, that famous for being <laughs> let's get ready to rumble. You know where they had him? 
at the TGI Fridays World Bartender Championship. Really? At the finals, they had the let's the real Michael Buffer doing Let's Get Ready to Rumble. Do you want me <laughs> to get the Let's Get Ready to Rumble guy? Because he is eight dollars. He is just <laughs> the, <laughs> Can we just get him for every episode? Absolutely. Patreon.com slash gam. We'll get yep. Michael Buffer to announce every episode. We are only watching boxing movies from now on. If we get Sly <laughs> Stallone on ever as a guest, he could say, let's get ready to mumble. <laughs> there you go. There you have it, everybody. Uh, Speaking of amazing puns. And, and you people yeah. say that the show goes downhill when Noah's not here. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> We're a great comedy. We do the laughs. You're enjoying. You're on a. You're driving anyways. You couldn't turn me off if you tried. <laughs> yeah, you just looked down to try and do it to defy me, and you hit a little girl. That's on you. <laughs> but uh, by the way, seriously speaking of amazing puns, the movie makes a pretty amazing pun right here. Oh yeah. So Tommy Gunn, part of the conflict here, he's such a clone of Rocky. And all the media was saying that the whole time. That got him mad enough to go to Don King actually. But he's such a clone of Rocky. If they're calling him the Clone Ranger. <laughs> clone that was such a good Ranger. Such a good pun. Oh, I loved it. Absolutely. Okay. 100% that being seriously. said, though, uh, it should have been the clone gunman because he's oh, Tommy yeah. Gunn. Oh, nice. you are, as usual, better than this movie. <laughs> I could beat Tommy Morrison in a fight. Is what I'm saying. Certainly now, <laughs> I feel like a lot of yeah. the time. And, and and let's be real, he his fighting style is the Clone Ranger, right? Like, uh, why don't you stand there, get punched in the face like six dozen times, and then hit real hard? It's the it's the Rocky yep. playbook, right? And Rocky's right. cheering him on from home, and he's punching the bag. And as he punches the bag, we see Tommy punch the bad <laughs> guy, and then he yeah. punches the bag. We see him punch the bad guy. I wanted this oh. metaphor to continue and like he stops to take a piss and all of a sudden Tommy's <laughs> taking a piss in the middle. Oh God, it's a puppet master. We accidentally did a puppet master. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> what the family was like clearly scared by that. They see Rocky <laughs> punching the little bag in his basement right when Tommy's punching the other boxer and they're all freaking out like there was a voodoo situation. But yeah, maybe there was and that that would have been perfect if they urinated together at the same I, time. Yeah. I really like this scene. I thought it was good, you know, filmmaking, right? Like it, it's it's directly like and Rocky's still moving. It shows he's still got it. That yeah, it right. smacks so gone look, poetry. I no, get no, it. no, I no. Have, it smacks of Rocky. The thing that is beautiful and terrible about this movie is that you can see the person who wrote Rocky touched this script and you'll never forgive yourself for it being this movie. As as part of the touching of that script, uh, the line "got to move back and forth like a metrodome" <laughs> was, was that was like in this scene. Metrodome. Yep, that is in this scene. So yeah, Tommy Gunn wins the big fight, and he's the champion. And he he goes up to the mic and he says, uh, "I don't know why everybody hates me because the crowd is booing him for not being Rocky Marciano." And he's like, "I don't know why everybody hates me they, tonight. Everybody, uh, boxing doesn't really have heels." So this is a weird <laughs> thing that would never happen. But anyways, I'm here to thank my best friend. His name rhymes with Rocky. <laughs> Don King. His name doesn't rhyme with Rocky. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Don King. And everybody's like, boo, boo. I can't believe you didn't thank Rocky. Boo, 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 boo. He's an angel on my shoulder. He's white. No, he's black. It's Don King. It seemed like I was going to set up Rocky there, right? No. No. But yeah, his family's like, I'm sorry about that. And they're all sort of awkward. And then his son gives him a, okay, this is going to be a little niche. Full mouth kiss. Well, a long, <laughs> sensual he does, full mouth kiss. He does give him a full mouth kiss, but there's actually something a little more upsetting. He gives him this scene. Um, look, I don't know if you've ever visited New York, but there are people in the parks and along the sidewalks who will offer to sketch you. Um, and those sketches <laughs> are, I want to say, Lovecraftian nightmares. He's drawn one of those. Yeah, he's drawn one of those of him and his dad. I, what I can only describe as a Central Park sketch of him and his dad. <laughs> so now we cut over to the press conference the next day. And again, the press corps, it's not even a press corps. It's just a roast. It's the fucking old school <laughs> Friars Club roast. Hey, Tommy, I hear your next opponent is already dead. 
<laughs> like it's just fucking Don Rickles like stands up behind Tommy. He gets no respect. It's fucking nuts. No, seriously, That's- take my wife. That doesn't even make sense right now. That's fine. I love these journalists more than anyone on earth. If we could, if uh, seriously, if we could put them in charge of the Mueller investigation, like ah, uh. anyone but the people in charge of it would be great. Uh, so here's here's the best part. They say, Rocky, you know, look, it doesn't matter that you won the world champion. He's a paper champion. You need to fight a real opponent. You need to fight a brain damaged old man. (laughs) Right. (laughs) A 45 year old retired guy. (laughs) We want you to fight your trainer. And and I just wanted this press corps to be there at the end of Rocky Four. Like, yeah, whatever, Rocky. When are you going to fight Mickey? And he just turns around and wallops (laughs) Burgess Meredith. I'm sorry, Mick, I gotta be the best. <laughs> but but then a hero, a god who whose character I will incorporate into all canons of everything I ever create forever. Are you talking about the protagonist of the movie, Tommy Gunn's sweatsuit? Uh, I am not. I wish I was. I'm talking about the reporter who's like, ah, Tommy, one last question. Your wife is a whore. I'm a reporter. And sits back down. <laughs> Yeah, the exact line is, why don't you fight the redhead in the front row? I hear she goes down easy, which is absolutely the best question any journalist has ever asked anyone ever. Yeah. And not a question. Not a, not a question. Right. I just right. wanted the whole press conference to come to a halt. And they were like, I'm sorry, what newspaper are you from? Oh, no, I'm Tommy's ex. Uh, I'm his cousin and he never calls me back anymore. I just thought I'd use this opportunity. We were roasting. But yeah, they, they basically, he needs to fight Rocky or no one will ever respect him. And then he and Don King go into the other room and Don King's like, you know, he, they actually make a really great point. You do suck. And if you don't fight Rocky, no one will ever respect you. <laughs> and, yeah. and we, during, we, we alighted over it, but like during the Tommy Gunn, you know, beating up hobos in a church montage, like we see Union Kane, like, beating up real boxers, right? Like this entire characterization of like, well, Union Kane isn't a reason he's a paper champion. Like it, it again, we got the memento thing. Like it requires you to have missed the last 94 minutes of this movie. Yeah. Yeah. We also get this crazy moment at the end of the scene where Don King says, you're always going to wonder if your success in boxing was because you're white. He says that to Tommy Gunn. What the fuck did that even mean? I think this is Sylvester Stallone dealing with his demons, right? I feel like he's met enough fans at this point of the Rocky series who can't stop saying the N word that he's just like, oh, and there should be a scene where someone's like, what if, what if Philadelphia is such a racist city that they built a statue to your fake character instead of Joe Lewis? And they were like, okay, we can get close to that. (laughs) There should really be affirmative action in boxing to get more whites into this sport. What <laughs> That's the what I'm worried about. about. Uh, and, and can we talk a little bit about Tommy Gunn's like 11 minute, like Al Pacino esque uh, chewing the scenery here at maximum <laughs> volume? Like maybe that wasn't the best cinematic choice to be like, no, no, I'm I'm sure Tommy can ad lib on camera for uh, for the next half an hour. Oh God. I could have watched those enormous sneakers ad lib for a half hour. That was pretty great. <laughs> that sweatsuit and those goddamn Zach Morris enormous fucking sneakers. Oh, were amazing. they're amazing. He's got like two small horses in the sides next to him. <laughs> All right. But now it's time for this movie's climactic finale. That's right. Not a boxing match. Not a moment between father and son. In ball. Bar fight. <laughs> but first bar pinball. Pinball. So- and this was fucking amazing. So it's st- <laughs> the scene starts with clearly, again, this is just real life Stallone doing something. They were like, we're keeping this. So he's playing, <laughs> he's playing pinball at the bar and he starts yelling at the bartender. He's like, the, the flippers aren't flipping. This is costing me a fortune. Which means. Sylvester Stallone played a significant amount of pinball and eventually noticed that the flippers aren't working. There's so many. Yeah, because there's here. There are are a lot of implications. One, 
He is incorrectly playing pinball. Two, he put more than one quarter into a pinball machine where the flippers don't where the work. the flippers were working. <laughs> Three, like, uh, he thinks down. pinball is some form of gambling. That is what I take away from that one sentence. I think, I think he thinks he has telekinesis, too. Or <laughs> at least he thought he did for a few rounds of pinball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you're spending all this time commenting on the pinball itself, and is no one going to mention the fact that Rocky is voiceovering this pinball game? He's <laughs> like, and the ball, it's rolling, oh, it goes through the loop, oh, then there's the multi-ball, and it, it bounces ding, off the flipper. Ding, ding, yeah. ding, ding, it's, ding, it's ding, a, ding, 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 it is, ding, It is 12 minutes of narrating the pinball we see on the screen. Fire, it's the fear, best. fire, flame, <laughs> fire, pinball, fire, flame. <laughs> Flipper, the flipper, the flipper's broken. It was an F word. You nailed it. You get some great results for your Sylvester Stallone soundboard if you watch this movie. So, <laughs> so sure enough, again, this is the climax of the movie. Buckle in. It's it's all been leading up to this. Tommy Gunn shows up to challenge Rocky to a boxing match, and Rocky says. No. No. <laughs> he just walks back inside. <laughs> like, if they ended the movie right there, that oh would be amazing. Oh, my God. That would, I would love this movie. I would I would sit everyone down, and I'd be like, hi, I'm Eli. I need you to watch this movie. It's Rocky Five. It's a really long <laughs> buildup. He's just like, no, I've got a pinball game going. I got, got a quarter pinball game. on the machine. <laughs> i got a whole oh, roll of credits. quarters and no paddles that work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I should have given that blessing for myself instead of you. All right, bye-bye. But no, he, he comes indoors <laughs> to challenge him to a fight. And, and they have a little back and forth here. And then Tommy goes too far. He punches beloved character who totally <laughs> doesn't deserve it and absolutely does not assault him first. Uncle Polly. <laughs> okay, let me explain to you. If you don't watch these movies along with us, first of all, shame on you for not sharing in our suffering. But second of all, let me walk you through what happens. Rocky's like, oh, what a box. So you're just in this for the money. And Uncle Polly walks over to Tommy Gunn, world heavyweight champion of boxing, and shoves him <laughs> and goes, you're a bum. Yep. And gets punched in the face. Gets punched so, in the face. That's right. I mean, uh, whatever you think about that, either way, the face that Stallone makes after Polly gets punched in the face, so he like, kneels down and like deals with Polly for a second, but then he does this huge dramatic face turn and you see him. Oh my God, this was beautiful. Like I went six to midnight and I was ready. This is Rocky movies all over again. I was so excited. The rest of this movie I was is as good as anything else in any Rocky moment. And again, look, if you pause this movie at this point and asked a thousand people, hey, what happens next? None of them would go, they get it in a fight right here in the bar. And that's the end of the movie. They would go, oh, Rocky agrees to beat to box Tommy and he wins. But no, they're going to fight next door in the alley. <laughs> oh, my God. We got, I mean, again, another iconic Rocky line. We get him being like, my ring's outside. And I was, oh my God, it's, this is such a good movie. At least this end is so goddamn good. It's time for a motherfucking Street fight. Street fight. I, yes. <laughs> and 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 the local media have showed up. This is my favorite part, right? Like you've got the the cameraman with the like huge nineteen eighties style like VHS cam, like barely hefted over his shoulder doing doing the bit from uh from Die Hard and and, and like <laughs> looks to his uh producer there and is like, Hey, can we capture this felony on local television? Yes. Yep. Yes, you we get it? can. It's the nineteen eighties, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Wait till you see what our mayor's about to do. Can we look into the PA system of this street alley? Yeah, yeah. we can. We can. I have a, I have a wireless microphone that does it. <laughs> yeah, we, guys, we can work that right up. Don, can we use your mic? Oh, it's magic. Okay, we won't use yours. It's his, ma- okay. His runs on magic. Though, to Don King's defense, he turns to Tommy, and I feel like the movie, and goes, this is not what I meant. I meant boxing <laughs> for millions of dollars, not fight him in an alley. And Tommy's like, no, I'm going to fight him in the alley. The nah, alley fight already started. <laughs> Too late. And it's time for a fucking alley fight. Now, look, I watched Rocky <laughs> Five more than a dozen times as a young man and remembered this fight being fucking awesome. 
And can I tell you right now? And you remembered yeah. goddamn correctly. I was wrong. Yeah. What? <laughs> you didn't like this fight in the alley? This, Are you kidding me? This is the problem with white people, the movie clip. Right, because this, this is this is the problem. Wait, wait, this is the problem with white people. This is your you're yeah, gonna zero in on this. Yeah, I want to I want to register protest here that this is not the problem with white much people. like white people. I will not allow you to protest. I am going to say because what happened is Sylvester <laughs> Sloan was like, look, I love doing Iraqi movies, but they don't let me show off my sweet street fighting moves. And they were like, uh, in this movie, we sure as fuck are. How would you feel about a bull charging esque trip? As your opening gambit. Amazing. He, he does the trip, and then later he sweeps the leg. Another <laughs> Karate Kid steal, but a beautiful oh, yeah. one. Come oh, on. my God. God did the, the Cobra Kai retelling of this movie from the perspective of, of Jackie Childs, of, of, of uh, George Washington, John <laughs> Don King, whatever. That would be amazing. I would give any amount of money to see that. Uh, be ready. It's on YouTube Red. It's already. You said I would give money and an algorithm flashed, and now it's on YouTube Red. They've got oh, three th seasons. That show is amazing. Have you watched it? No. Yeah. yeah it's, it's the new really, Cobra really Kai good. I love it so much. It's terrible, but it's so good. I don't right. care. So, yeah, they do some sweet, sweet street fighting. But then because this is a Rocky movie, it's time for Rocky to get punched in the head a bunch until Burgess Meredith's <laughs> ghost tells him to win. <laughs> <laughs> and again, just while he's getting punched in the head, one other quick note, Don King does raw again. Like he sees that Tommy starts to win and he's like, raw. Okay. Okay, you have to watch the movie. I'm not doing it justice. It's phenomenal. And also, when we get the Burgess Meredith moment, we get him like, you know, whatever the found footage of Burgess Meredith that they were able to use. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they do a pop scare. Of they do. Burgess Meredith. That's what I, I said. This is, the, this is the horror take of the Burgess Meredith pep talk because it's it got like body horror. The latest. Blood is running down Rocky's face in a dream sequence at one point. Like Burgess pulls out one of his eyes and he's like, I've got my eye on you, Rock. <laughs> it's a fucking hellscape. <laughs> I got so goddamn excited. And then I'm pretty sure a little bit of gonna fly now happens. And I was like weeping with Rocky pride here. Like I, I was ready to like go find a giant dude with a mullet and get into a fight in, in somewhere in Cincinnati, which is actually not very hard to do. <laughs> and, and was the point of this movie. So yeah. So yeah, he's fighting Tommy and Tommy's fighting him and it looks like Rocky's going to lose. He's out on the ground and then he says it. The most iconic line in all of film. <laughs> I didn't hear no bell. That's right. I didn't One more hear. Round. Oh, so good. So I good. cannot maintain an erection without this scene playing in the background during sex. <laughs> it's, it's, it's done for me. That is, it's, it's peaked. Yeah. That's it. Fair. Solid and fair. There's, As you well know, Eli Bosley. <laughs> no jokes to add. It's just, look, teeth is a towel rack. When you, you, you play the credits to Rocky Five, and you can fucking hang a toddler <laughs> off him. He becomes a monkey bars for the local children. So, yeah, he, he didn't hear no bell. He defeats Tommy once and for all. And then... Because there's some comedy moment. Is he going to punch that litigious black gentleman once and for all? You, you bet he is. <laughs> <laughs> and he walks up to the guy, walks up to Don King, and Don King's like, punch me and I'll sue. <laughs> and Rocky's like, sue me for what? And it's like literally assault. You I punched mean, me what? in the face. I, it, Do you know? No, but. But seriously, this, this is this is actually good law here, right? Like it's it's Wait. the concept of the, of the judgment proof defendant, right? Like what Rocky is saying is not. I'm sorry, like, Andrew yeah. Torres. Um, yeah. Can we just circle back? You said this is good law right here. Yeah. I want to be clear, Andrew. I read a story about a vice principal challenging a <laughs> trans student to pee in front of him today. So be very careful with your words. I own a motor vehicle. Yeah, so just one more time, the premise of this is a white professional boxer assaults an old black guy who is not a boxer. That's good law. Andrew, go. Andrew Torres, <laughs> Esquire. So, Andrew Torres, yes. So the Please whole proceed. premise Governor. of this movie is that all of Rocky's money has been, you know, shredded and buried in the Marianas Trench or whatever, right? Like, And so R Rocky's point here is not like, 
oh, it's it's not that it's not, you know, a, 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 a tortious offense for me to punch you. It's like, what are you going to get off me? I don't have any fucking money anymore. So uh, sue all you want. Uh, I'll keep punching. And 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 he's right. Like, sue all you want. I'll keep punching is my Rocky T-shirt. They are available on our website right now. <laughs> sue me for what? Uh, your expendables one through 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, oh. look, the real, you know, Sylvester Stallone would definitely not punch you. No. <laughs> yes, he would. Or would, you know, but then you could sue him because he has assets. Yeah. For real money. Can we trick Sylvester Stallone out of all his money with some sort of signing scheme? All right. Who's going to yes. get punched though? Me. That's, that's what I would happily want. get punched. All of us. Keith, I don't care. Change my boat. <laughs> <laughs> he gets punched twice. And then, <gasps> rising like a phoenix towards the very end of this scene, and nay, the penultimate <laughs> scene of the movie, comes Father Catholic Priest, who is standing <laughs> window-like <laughs> above the crowd to bless him assaulting a random boxing performer. <laughs> Did you guess right? No, because that's the craziest thing you've ever heard, and you thought maybe you took some acid before your morning commute? That's what I said. It's real. That's real. You're awake and alive. <laughs> They seriously close out this movie with the Catholic Church giving full sanction to a professional boxer assaulting the old black guy, not a professional boxer who was not involved in the fight. Yeah. Catholic Church, cross, left, right, up, down. God thinks this is fine. Yeah. And 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 let's be honest here. At, at the same time that you have the priest giving the literal thumbs up to Rocky committing assault, <laughs> you have the cops dragging Tommy Morrison and only Tommy Morrison away from this and, and putting him in the back of the, uh, the, the, the black and white Christian movie, Christian, movie. There you go, Christian you. movie, eh, except for the white guy getting, arrested. <laughs> so, but so, yeah. So now it's time for the tail scene of the movie. Uh, Rocky and his son are running up the stairs to the very real statue that Philadelphia has of the fictional character <laughs> of Rocky. Yep. yep. And not of Joe Lewis, the boxer who is real from their city. <laughs> I really wanted them to be like running up the stairs of a courthouse and then Rocky <laughs> just has to go in there and go to jail for assaulting a man. <laughs> that would be not allowed to do that. amazing. But no, he gives him the cufflink and another couple of sensual kisses on the eyelids or whatever. And then literally because the like they stand there for a moment and the movie's like, remember the other Rocky movies? Those were good. Huh? How about a couple of clips of those? <laughs> Oh God. And, and so a, right. They, they run a montage that is all of the highlights of Rocky one through four. Right. And B is an Elton John song. Yep. Right? It's, oh. it's the craziest it's ending sequence of a movie about punching choice. people that I have ever seen. Unbelievable. Yep. And, and that's the film, folks. Rocky Five and Christian movie. Credits. <laughs> Christian movie. Official. <laughs> All right. I think that's going to do it for our review of uh, the classic Christian movie, Rocky Five. Rocky Five. Can't get mad at but us. But that now. is not going to do it for the episode just yet because we need to tell you about the fantastic musical that we've got lined up for next week. So, Eli, tell us. What is on deck? One of our most requested film. Apparently, this was huge for homeschools and all the like Christian camps and stuff. The Pilgrim's Progress. Get ready. People. Rocky Five, the music. <laughs> Rocky <laughs> Five. Again, we're just doing that from now on. <laughs> I'm in. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 213 to a merciful close. Big thanks to Andrew Torres for joining us. Andrew, uh, where can everyone hear more from you? Oh, yeah. Uh, check out my podcast. Everything's terrible. And yet somehow my Twitter feed has 30,000 socialists telling me Kamala Harris is a cop and Liz Warren only represents <laughs> superficial change. So I might as well stay home in 2020 and can perpetuate this nightmare. And sorry. Okay. It's just to, to cool. be clear. She's a fucking cop. Like, listen, I don't want to lie to the listener. To your own God, I, I, Hi, I, no, I hate welcome you. back from the time. I hate you more <laughs> than I did for making me watch that Christian debate movie. <laughs> and once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors for all the generosity. <laughs> Thank you for that segue. That was seamless. Thank you. 
Uh, you want to go every three words? Absolutely. If you'd like to help support <laughs> the show, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash God awful. And that didn't count right. Wow. Battle is hard and get you early access to <laughs> Ad free version of every episode. Plus, you get you the can bonus also help episodes. us out a ton by leaving a five star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever else podcasts live. If you have comments, questions, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by absolutely no one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this episode, we're going rogue, everybody. I disavow myself from everything plausible, <laughs> deniability, ESQ. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Andrew Torres and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House close. Tommy Gunn displayed the level-headed temperament and personal loyalty that made him perfect to become Donald Trump's next national security advisor. <laughs> <laughs> Rocky Nine in Rascal Scooters is going to be amazing. Teenage Eli loved this movie and watched it three or four times a month as a child. And it, well, it just explains a ton. <laughs> I didn't hear no call. I was there already. Prove it. Prove it with your clicker. Oh, I was there before you just barely nope. check the version history. Check the version history. Boom, I just typed a K. <laughs> I just didn't type a K. There you go. Second place. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.